In the previous episode of the launcher test, we started our search for the best Minecraft launcher in existence. In that video, we had a look at the launcher that I've been using full time for the past one and a half years. The ModRamp app, together with its direct competitor. The CurseForge app, both of them are official launchers of their respective platform. And while none of them do something particularly crazy, they are both nice in their own regard. But I have a slight feeling that there are some better launchers out there than the ModRamp one. I couldn't know. I've never tried anything else. And that is gonna be the main goal of this series, trying as many launchers as possible and finding the best one. And after posting the first episode and asking you guys which launcher I should check out next, you guys almost unanimously voted for the Prism launcher. And still, we're not gonna take a look at that one just yet. For one simple reason. Because the Prism launcher is not actually a original launcher. It is actually a fork of another launcher. Prism itself is a direct fork of PolyMC. And PolyMC on its turn is a fork of MultiMC. And while I've seen essentially no one recommend PolyMC, MultiMC was actually recommended a lot. So I feel like before we're gonna check out Prism, which according to a lot of you guys is the best launcher out there, we should have a look at MultiMC first and see if it is any good and why the people behind Poly and Prism decided to fork that launcher in particular. Let's go and have a look. So this is it, Multi MC5. Let's see if we can figure out what is so good about this launcher. Now, the first thing I want to say is it looks very simple and clean. There is no clutter at all. Zero images, zero ads. It is just clean and simple. A bit too light for my liking. I'm kind of hoping there are some kind of dark mode in the settings, but we will get back to that later. First, I actually want to create a new instance and see what that is like. There's a button all the way in the top left, which says add instance. And when we click on there, we can go ahead and create a new Minecraft installation. And already I have a few questions. So we have the choice to download a vanilla version of the game. Fair enough. We can also import from a zip file, which I guess can sometimes be really nice. And we also have the option to download stuff from ModRimp. Now that's pretty cool. We can just simply install a mod pack this way. But for some reason, CurseForge is completely missing. And I have no clue why. In my head, one of the biggest benefits of a third-party Minecraft launcher that is not related to any content platform, like ModRimp and CurseForge, is that you can simply have both. They both have an API which you can use to download stuff directly from their platform. And you can integrate that API into your launcher. They did this with ModRimp, but for some reason, CurseForge is completely missing. Instead, we got the AT launcher, which I guess could be nice, but why would I want to download stuff from the AT launcher? Then we have a Feed the Beast app importer, which I guess is really handy for the few people that actually use the Feed the Beast app. Then we got Feed the Beast Legacy, which kind of just looks like a way to download some Feed the Beast mod packs. So I guess that's nice. And then lastly, we got Technic. And that's it. No curse forge whatsoever. Now, by just looking at this, it almost makes me think that Multi MC did something which pissed Curse Forge off, and now they are just no longer allowed to use their API. That is really what this seems like. That is just speculation, though. I have absolutely no clue if there is anything going on behind the scenes, but it seems like such a strange decision to not include Curse Forge in your launcher, especially if you are supporting Modrim. It's not like they support no content platforms. They do, but just not CurseForge. So if anyone watching this has more information about why that is, do let me know in the comments, because it's kind of confusing. But okay, let's do a little search. I'm gonna try and see if I can find Performium and ooh, look at that. I totally can. Performium is here. Let's go. Let's simply click on OK. And there we go. It's installing. Now, I hope that the installation would have something like a profile picture. And I, it, it kind of seems like there should be one, but for some reason there is not. What does this do? Oh, yeah, no, why not? Anyway, the button next to creating a new instance is the folders button. And it seems like this is simply a button to open the folder of a certain instance. So I assume because I have this one selected when I click on here, yeah, it will just open it up. Okay, that's fine. We can click on Performium and then here we got .minecraft, there we go. And this is where all the mods are actually located. Nothing crazy, but a handy feature to have, I guess. Now next, let's have a look at the settings. So over here we have a few launcher settings and I'm hoping user interface. Ooh, yes, I want 
Dark mode. Close. Oh, much better. <laughs> that is much better. Okay, finally. So apparently there are also a whole bunch of different icons we can have. So there are default icons and they look like this. Ooh, they look really old. Even the Patreon logo is outdated. Okay, let's not use this one. Then we got the simple ones in four different colors. Let's try the blue ones, I guess. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I know, that's simple. Oh, the Patreon logo is even more outdated. That's crazy. How did they manage to do that? Anyway, what does OS X look like? Oh, that's... No, that's not better. iOS then? I'm an Apple user. iOS looks kind of clean. That's not... That's not bad. Flat? What is flat? Ooh, I think I like flat best. Yeah, flat is flat is clean. That's nice. Now, next to user interface, we also got the console. So that's really nice to see. There actually is a console. If you boot your game and it crashes or there is some kind of error, then you will be able to see that over here. Always nice to see a console. Just good to have. That's great. Now then we got some Minecraft settings. So this is where we can change the window size the game will be as soon as it boots. We can also enable some library workarounds. And then there is game time stuff. So there is a way to show game time when you're playing. I would assume it is the game time that's also showing in the bottom right. It says total playtime over there, so... That's pretty cool. And you can even make it so it only shows in hours. I guess that's nice. Some people want to keep track of how much they play this game. For me, it can be summarized in uh, just too much. <laughs> but I guess it's nice if you can keep track. And then we got Java. So you're actually able to change your Java settings. You can change the language. And I do have to say, it does support a lot of languages. So that, that's nice. Then we got custom launch commands. I would assume 99% of people are not going to need this, but for the few who do, the option is at least here. Then we got an option to set up a proxy. We got some external tools and then we also got the log upload. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool stuff, but also pretty basic. I've not found any revolutionary feature yet, but okay, next button is help. Sure, report a bug, Discord link, Reddit link, that's all fine. Then we got an update button, which specifically checks for updates for multi-MC. So it doesn't seem like this will update the actual instances, it will just update the multi-MC launcher. So that's good to keep in mind. Did I find anything? Also didn't think it would. I installed this launcher literally five minutes ago. <laughs> and then we have a Patreon link, and more importantly, next to that, we got a cat icon it's a fluffy kitten okay yeah no why not <laughs> what <laughs> i don't know why i want a cat here though but it's a feature of this launcher so i i guess we should just keep it enabled yeah why not Anyway, now let's have a look at all of the per installation settings. So Performium I just downloaded and I'm able to change a lot of settings. So first of all, I can change group and I have no clue what that means. Enter a group name. Well, obviously, you should subscribe to the channel. Hey, I would appreciate it a lot if you did. Let's go and create it and oh, so these are different groups. And I would assume you can just have a bunch of different groups here. So that's pretty cool. Then we can, of course, launch the game. We can launch the game in offline mode then beneath that we have the option to edit the instance and that will open up this menu and it seems like we can change a lot of stuff so first of all we can see what version minecraft is in it's even what version of the fabric loader we're using and it seems like by clicking on change version we can simply change the version of minecraft now obviously doing that now will just completely break this mod pack but it's at least cool that the option is here then when we go to loader mods we can actually see all of the mods which are currently installed and we can actually add one so that's pretty cool let's click on add and okay well <laughs> i thought we were about to browse mods in a menu on for example modrinf or curseforge but no we just have to download them still from the website and then we can simply import them that's kind of a bummer that's not what i expected okay the next we got resource packs and i would assume it's the same here of course it is yeah just windows explorer okay kind of disappointed because of that i i expected otherwise okay but we basically got the same thing for every single major piece of content so we got the mods, resource packs, shader packs, then notes. And I don't know what this is about. Subscribe to Kasai Sora. There we go. That is now a note. I don't know what that does, but I guess that could be handy. Then we got worlds. And once again, it works in the same way. And then we got servers. So we're able to add a server to our server list in the launcher. Mm, okay, that is useless. <laughs> 
Like sure, it looks like a cool feature, but it's so easy to do it in game. What is the added value of doing it in your launcher? I'm not really sure. Screenshots, I guess that is nice. If you take a screenshot inside of Minecraft, I assume it will just appear here. And that is very handy. You don't have to go to all of your folders. So that is definitely nice. And then we got some settings. Again, these are kind of settings we already took a look at earlier. So just Java settings, game window settings, and then some custom commands and stuff like that. These are settings you can also change globally. And if you apply them globally, it will of course apply to every single instance. But if you don't want a certain instance to use the default settings, then you can change that here. And then, last but not least, the logs. Sure, why not? Now, all of the stuff we just took a look at in the menu, there is also a button for over here. So we can edit notes. We can do the same thing for mods, for worlds, for screenshots. Then you can quickly open the Minecraft folder if that's something you're into. The config folder and the instance folder. We basically just covered all of this. Now, next we got an option to export, delete, or copy an instance. So that could be kind of useful. And then there is the create shortcut option, which I guess... Could be pretty useful if there is one particular instance you just always want to play then you can just make sure you have a shortcut to that one and it will just make your life a whole lot easier now a feature i'm still kind of looking for is being able to change my skin or change my cape inside of the launcher i'm not able to do that here maybe i am if i would log into an account which i'm definitely gonna try now okay there we go for some reason i was not able to log into my casasura account at all it just would not allow me, but I logged in with Breadshop and this is looking really promising. So here I got my account. My skin is loaded in. Even my cape is showing up here. And here at the bottom, I'm simply able to change my skin to one of the default ones. We also have a button here which says open skins folder. And it seems like we will just be able to put skins inside of there. After that, they will show up down here and we can simply select them. So that is awesome. And I just noticed this. It also allows you to change your cape that is all i was asking for so we can now simply select home and then we can click on apply changes there we go this account's authentication token has expired i logged in like three minutes ago sign in again Sh sure let's try this one more time let's see if it works this time <laughs> home cape apply Okay, I don't know if this is Multi-MC's fault or Microsoft's fault. It is one or the other, definitely. <laughs> but I don't know which party to blame. But for some reason, I'm just not able to change my skin because my token is expired every single time I try. I don't really know what's going on there, but that's for sure annoying. Now I'm wondering if I'm even able to boot this game. Let's see. Okay, no. Yeah, no, sure. It's just, yeah, I'll log in again. Why not? Okay, I logged in once more. There it goes. I'm going to exit this and I'm going to try to boot Performium. Okay. Okay, that does work. If I don't attempt to change my skin, the game will actually boot. That's amazing. <laughs> but still kind of a bummer. I am really looking for a launcher which can also change my skin and cape. And even though this one does have the functionality built in, there's just an error that pops up every single time. Now, I'm thinking this might be a temporary error. Maybe for you guys it does just work. And for me it is just bad timing. Could totally be, but it's still annoying. And there it is. It's actually booting. Perfect. Okay, it works, it boots, we're currently running Performium, this is just all great. Okay, so what are my thoughts on the Multi-MC launcher? Overall, it's pretty good. The visuals are nice and simple, there is no bloatware anywhere to be found, and there are also no ads, which is definitely a big plus. I just don't want ads on an application on my PC. I just can't get used to that. Even though I've used the Modrave Launcher for one and a half years now, I still don't like it. And in terms of features, it is pretty solid. There are just a few things I'm missing though. For some reason, I'm not able to download stuff from CurseForge, which is strange. And I'm definitely not the biggest CurseForge fan on the planet. I prefer Modrave any day, but it is still weird. And I still kind of just want to have the functionality when and I do need it. CurseForge has a lot more content than Modrinf does. I mean, it has been around for like seven more years. 
So that only makes sense. But yeah, I just want to be able to download stuff from there as well. And for some reason, I can't. Now, something I am very pleased to see is that you are able to change your skin and even your cape inside of the launcher. For some reason, it just didn't work for me though. No clue why? Or maybe this is a recurring problem and I'm not the only one experiencing this. I have no clue at all. But yeah, this is actually great. This is the first launcher I'm checking out in the launcher test that is not the mod frame for CurseForge app. And already, I'm pretty impressed. Now this does really make me think if multi-MC is so good already, how good is Prism gonna be? Like if Prism fixes these few issues that I just lined out, then it might already be a good candidate to become my next main launcher. Because that would pretty much exactly be what I'm looking for. Now I do also have to say a reason I can see people dislike the multi-MC launcher is because of its looks. Now personally I'm quite a fan of just very simplistic, no clutter, just nice and simple. But I I do also know that I'm in the minority here. The majority of people like very colorful launchers and animations and glowing effects and, you know, a lot of extra stuff. Cool graphics and things like that. Multi-MC does absolutely not have that. So if that is something you're into, it might also not be the right fit. But overall, it seems pretty solid and I'm already really, really excited to see what other launchers are out there. Now, once again, if there is a launcher you would highly recommend me checking out in the next episode of the launcher test, do let me know in the comments. And that is going to be it for today. Do make sure to subscribe to my channel, join my Discord. Thank you so much, channel members, and then I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye, see you later. Bye bye.